we're live. You want a fruit snack or something? No, Amala, I don't want a fruit snack. You, you shouldn't be eating those. Why? Because you're starting to get a little rotund. What are you talking about? A little round. This is water weight. No, it's, you know. it's fruit snack and hot Cheeto weight and nasty food weight. You're no. starting to get fat. I'll just go on a little jog, you know. It's really not my fault, I must say. It's not your fault? Mm -mm. Whose fault is it? Well, really, if we if we look deep into the issue, obesity can really be blamed on systemic racism. I'm going through a lot of stress right now. It's mm -hmm. a black person in America. We got the Ahmaud Arbery case happening right now. Systemic racism everywhere. Kyle Rittenhouse just got told he's not guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I got to eat. So it's my fault. Yes. So those fruit snacks that you were eating and the hot Actually, Cheetos. I'm going to continue to eat my fruit snacks. You are a fat slob. It's racism's fault. Your fault, white man. You disgust me. <laughs> <laughs> and scene, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still eating my fruit snack. <laughs> Welcome to Will and Amal Alive. I got this package that I'm going to open later that I'm using to uh, portray my obesity. Mm -hmm. I have a package here too. <laughs> so it's, Pull it's it out, Will. No, no, I don't, I don't want to, you know, reveal anything, but I, I have a package too. I'm not fat either. Okay. Promise. Now we have a, a bunch of really fun stories coming up uh, in the show today. One of them is an excuse that has been set out by two Harvard experts, as well as a multitude of people saying that obesity can be largely blamed on systemic racism when it comes to the black and Hispanic community. So we will get to that. We're also going to be talking Inez Cantor, as well as a UK school that has nixed uh, Winston Churchill because white privilege and white supremacy and we no longer want to value historic white men anymore but before we get into that we have a discussion that we need to get into surrounding kyle rittenhouse guys we had a fantastic morning this yeah. morning yeah we did and before we get started just real quick remember you can go to spotify you can go to apple Podcasts, you can go to google play get our podcast on there download it rate it five stars on apple Podcasts. so let's say you miss an episode you don't have to come back to youtube or facebook to watch it you can go on any of these podcast apps and you can go and you can find our show listen to it go back a week from now and listen to past episodes all sorts of great stuff so make sure that you're on podcast apps with will and amla live as well absolutely we're we're just as good to listen to as we are to Not be just watched <laughs> But We're better to be watched. Better to be watched. Yeah, we have faces for podcasts. Yes, it's yes, we do, uh -huh. I guess. <laughs> But guys, fantastic warning. Kyle Rittenhouse was found not guilty, not on one, not on two, but on all charges in relation to his case and the shooting that he was involved in in Kenosha, Wisconsin. It really was a beautiful moment. I know a lot of people around not just the United States, but around the world were holding their breath on this one, trying to see what was going to happen to this young 18 year old man who defended himself and was subsequently attacked by the internet, by mainstream media, by the American people, by the ACLU. And now he's been found not guilty. Let's watch the video of this moment happening in court because it truly is a beautiful, beautiful moment. H. Gross Kreutz, we the jury find the defendant, Kyle H. Ritt Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. Members of the jury, are these your unanimous verdicts? Is there anyone who does not agree with the verdicts as read? Would you wish the jury pulled? No. Okay. Uh, okay, folks, your uh, job is done. And uh... H. Gross Kreutz. Let's go, Kyle. Let's, Let's go, go, Kyle. Kyle. Let's go, Kyle. Let's go. Hero. <laughs> he really My is. Man. That was really, really amazing. And I know a lot of people were saying it made them emotional to see that. He's sitting there. I can't imagine what that moment is like for somebody in court waiting for a group of people to decide what the rest of your life is going to look like. He's sitting there shaking before the verdict is even read out and he just falls to his knees as the moment comes. Uh, just an incredible. And we gotta, I gotta give some kudos to the jury for you know sticking with their guns and doing the right thing because they were under uh, a, a huge amount of pressure to do what the left wanted them to do, to do what these people are pressuring them to do, what the media pressured them to do. I mean, they were under a ton of pressure. So the fact that they made the right decision, even with all that, is super cool. It so is. good job, jurors. You really, 
you really pulled through on this one. Yeah, the last story that we covered in this case in regard to the jury was them being followed by an MSNBC producer. So I, I think these these jurors have been under a, an immense amount of stress, I'm sure from their own families, their own communities, but the world at large is looking at the decision that they were going to make. And a lot of people wanted to see this go very differently. So to be a juror on this case is probably a very difficult thing to, to take to task. You will remember where you were on this day. You will. I was in my car about to drive <laughs> back to, or actually, no, Amala you, walked in on me. So you, so you don't remember where you were. Well, okay, on this fine. Day. All right. You should remember where you, you are. You should even remember. If I don't, okay? You guys should remember. Seriously, it's a really big deal. We're, we'll be we'll be celebrating tonight. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Before we talk about the broader implications of this case, which I think is an interesting discussion that needs to be had because it is historic and there are going to be consequences to what has happened on this very day. I want to get into some of the immediate reactions, not only outside of the courthouse, but on the Internet. Here's an Oh, here's one that's outside of the courthouse. This one was an interesting one to watch. Obviously, this woman is not happy about what happened today. Here we go. I am a man, man. We'll pause there. So the woman obviously is very distraught, uh, a lot of emotional stress regarding the, the end of this trial. She says, I'm a monument. I'm a monument. F America. And then proceeds to have a grand mal seizure. That is how bad people are reacting to an 18 year old boy being labeled not guilty. You can't keep it together. That is horrible. It is. That's, sucks that she had a seizure. You know, it's, I, I don't want anyone to have a seizure, but geez like that that's crazy that that is your level of like emotional yeah, yeah yeah and that happens that's wild and to it, scream f america it makes me feel a little less bad but i'm like you know what are you doing what are you doing and to think that something like this a clear-cut case i mean evidently clear-cut case of self-defense can elicit such an emotional reaction from somebody is amazing and a lot of the narratives that continue to persist around kyle rittenhouse just blow my mind particularly the narrative of white supremacy and black trauma associated with this case we should, How? We should showcase all the the leftist things yes. that people said here we i have them right up pulled up for you guys to look at funny enough we we We've heard about these things like Operation Mockingbird. You know, you say a lie enough that it becomes truth and all these different outlets and all these different leftists will say the same thing over and over and over again, even if it's the exact same quote and expect people to fall for this narrative. Here is what we found on Twitter. And here's the quote. I want to live in a country where Colin Kaepernick is seen as a hero and Kyle Rittenhouse is seen as a terrorist. Now, it's very strange that we have eight people all verified, all leftists on Twitter tweeting the exact same quote anybody anybody want to speculate on on why that's happening <laughs> robots essentially robots yeah it's basically robots what are they, what do they call it the, the the npcs yeah NPCs, you just that's right you just repeat your talking point over and over and over and over and you don't care that everybody on your side of the aisle is saying the exact same thing over and over again these are eight different people on this one of them two names you may uh immediately recognized three actually lavar burton george takai and mark lamont hill huge huge leftists mm -hmm. all saying the same thing yeah, they it's all just the wonderful thing. even if all the information is there you you lose okay you you lost the things that you were talking about okay everything has gone not the way that you planned it to be you still have such a delusion that you can't look at the evidence and what happened to the trial and the not guilty verdicts and everything else that ha that has happened and say I screwed up. You still can't do that. You still cannot do that whatsoever. That's just a, a level of delusion that goes beyond most most things. Yeah, and that's what people need to reach here. And I think, I, how much more evidence do you need to go, okay? There is no amount. There's no amount of evidence. It doesn't matter. There could be, that someone could literally have the best piece of evidence that shows exactly, I mean, they already did. Mm -hmm. But I mean, let's say it was like so even more <laughs> clear cut, high quality. It can't be. It, that yeah. someone would watch and it was, concrete evidence they would still say no they would still say no they would still say no this isn't real this to all the matter. woke leftists out there i used to be you take a moment take in all the information as it stands take in the jury's verdict on this case a case a trial that's gone on for weeks now and go 
maybe I was wrong. How hard is it to say that? Maybe I was wrong. Four words, four words. Is that within the realm of possibility for you? Because you would much rather see uh, an innocent guy go to prison for life than you would admit that you are wrong. Unbelievable. And now let's get into, you know, a different discussion. What are the implications of this trial going well, the show, way that it went? What do you want to see? Do you want to show the MSNBC one? Oh, the MSNBC uh, the the article. article. Yeah. Let me pull it up for it's on the, it's on the, the sh- people here. Yeah, here we are. Sure. Kyle Rittenhouse trial was designed to protect white conservatives who kill. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. You are so <sighs> stupid. You have to be so stupid. The media is the enemy of the people. If you don't think the media is the enemy of the people, I don't, you must be living under a rock right. because these people are evil. These people are terrible. They don't give a crap about you at all. They will say whatever they want to say, especially now because we were just talking about the show yesterday. Bill Gates is funding even more of these media companies. Jeff Bezos is funding them. Uh, so then they write all these leftist horrible things. They're the enemy of the people. Don't trust any single thing that these people say at all. At Don't all. even trust the weather on the New York Times on the back cover of the of their magazine or their newspaper. Uh, it's, all of it is lies. Seriously. Yeah. I posted a, a TikTok earlier today that luckily we drummed up enough ruckus and it's back. But the 13 minutes in taken down for hate speech in defense of this verdict. 13 mm-hmm. minutes in taken down for hate speech. Amazing that no matter what you do, taking this whole thing to trial, going through all the all the uh, the steps of due process and still coming out on the other end of us being right, they don't want to see it. No. They don't want to see it. Kyle Rittenhouse is a badass. He is. He took down a rapist. Yep. And stopped arsonists. Yep. And then has now taken down the media Democrat leftist machine. He really has. He is a badass. Even people on the left should be able to say he's a super badass guy. I hope he, uh, I hope he sues. I yeah. hope he sues. Oh, he better. He better, him and Nick Sandman better, better get together and start figuring out how oh, to Oh, absolutely. Start a, start a dream team of people who sue for defamation and get yeah. millions of dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Babylon B put out a funny article, if you guys saw it, or, you know, one of their headlines that said, Kyle Rittenhouse and Nick Sandman decide to have joint custody over CNN. <laughs> If they were smart, man, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Here's a couple more reactions from the internet today. See him, this picture of Kyle Rittenhouse below. Now imagine if he were black. And we talked about this on the show. If Kyle Rittenhouse was black, I'd be even more proud because you have to be a black person who goes against the narrative that is constantly pushed on you every single day and go, you know what? No, I'm not going to allow people to riot in my streets. I'm not going to allow them to set cars on fire. I am going to defend myself when they threaten me. I don't care if he's white or black. He's done a great thing. Right. I just hate those kinds of hypotheticals. You know, what if he was Jewish? What if he was Muslim? What if he was gay? Like, None of that. Why does it even matter? And also you have no idea how people would react. You literally don't know. You don't know just because of someone's race or sexuality or gender or any of this. Like you don't know. I hate when people say that acting as if like they know something, but they obviously don't know. It's an easy way to get out of having a real argument about what happened instead of actually talking about the Kyle case. Oh no, let's talk about the black Kyle case. Sure. You you don't actually have to talk about the facts of this actual one because you can just make up some metaphorical lie and, and fantasy land and say, well, what if he was black? And then if he was black, well, then Trump probably would have rode down from Washington, D.C. and shot him himself. You know, it's like mm-hmm. people say the stupidest things in their little fantasy worlds on these hypothetical scenarios. It's like I, I hate people who say those kind of things because it's just you have no idea what would happen. You have no idea. They love to speculate. And again, it's a way uh, it's a form of propaganda. It's a form of propaganda because they can simply put out any lie that they see fit and you'll go, well, yeah. Uh, hypothetically that would be the case it is ridiculous and a lot of people are saying well what this what this trial is going to do because you've said kyle rittenhouse is not guilty is it's going to cause a lot of other white men to pull out their ar-15s and go outside and go shoot people (sighs) hell yeah brother that's all we do we go outside with our ar-15s and we shoot people because that's what we do brother you know, we do us white conservative man. Brother, I'm telling you, I'm I'm half black, half white. Half of me's got to fight the other half on a day-to-day basis. I almost shot my own self with an AR-15 yesterday. You know? Oh, I know, buddy. <laughs> getting, so, getting so fancy with them grit stocks and red laws. 
But here's what I think is the implication of this trial. What I think is that rioters who want to go out and set cars on fire and threaten people and hit people in the head with skateboards might think twice before doing that. Uh, They might go, okay, first of all, I might die (laughs) doing this. Also, this is illegal. Also, this person is not going to go to jail for defending themselves. It amazes me how many people convince themselves that Kyle Rittenhouse was going to spend life in prison for this. The thing that the the grand psyop of all of this that people wanted to, that the mainstream media essentially wants you to think is that you do not have a right to defend yourself. They want you to think that you don't have that right. So Kyle winning Mm -hmm. in this is is amazing because you do have that right. Obviously. It's in the Second Amendment. I mean, it, it, you you so obviously have the right to defend yourself, whether that's with your words and your actions or, you know, with 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 what Kyle Rittenhouse did. And yep. they want to make it seem like you don't have that yep. right. They want to feel make you feel like, oh, you just need to listen to what the government says. Or if someone comes into your town because they are protesting social justice or whatever stupid thing, you just have to let them do it because you don't have the right to defend your community or yourself. They want to make you feel that way. Don't let them don't let them push you into that. Don't let them gaslight you and make you think that, oh, I can't defend myself. You can. You can defend yourself. Yeah. You have that right. They want to make you feel like a weak person. Don't be weak. Be strong. We we all got to be like Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. A 17-year-old boy who said, wow, my city is getting burned to the ground. Let me do something about it. Let me go provide first aid. Let me go guard uh, this car salesman before all of his property is burned to a crisp. Let me go and do that. That is brave. That is brave. And he did pay almost the ultimate price for doing that. That is insane. And the fact that the narrative is not focused around that, but is instead focused around defending rapists and rioters and looters and arsonists is beyond me. And it shows the state of American politics. It shows the state of the American media. It shows the state of American social media. It, this is really shown a light on all the problems that we have right now as a society. And who knows what's going to happen in Wisconsin tonight? I mean, Kyle who might knows? have to go back out there. <laughs> Imagine it's like a year later we're we are going over another Kyle Rittenhouse I know. verdict. Yeah. Well, they're, if they're going to go destroy their city, someone's got to step up. We're like, guys, Kyle's not guilty. The 2.0. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, but I, I, anybody will make everything about racism. Anybody will make anything about racism. We're going to move on to another story here. Again, great day for Kyle Rittenhouse. Great day for America. Great day for freedom and justice and defense. So let's move on uh, to some things that are not so great. Here's an article put out by Boston.com. These two Harvard experts are now saying that racism and obesity are inextricably linked. You cannot really have one without the other now they're talking about the obesity problem in america which again is not a race problem it's an american problem but they're talking about why the rates of obesity are so high within the black indigenous and people of color bipoc groups in america and their their explanation for this is that black people are so stressed out by systemic racism that they eat more and they become obese And that through redlining and uh, making black people impoverished, they have no choice but to eat poor foods. No choice. Well, (laughs) they have a choice. Yeah, I do. Well, here's one thing. Okay. I have to somewhat, I have to agree in one Mm -hmm. sense. Okay. When I went to Baltimore and I went to Sandtown, which is the worst place in Baltimore, I did a little vlog there going Mm -hmm. through and seeing what is wrong. I mean, it's literally one of the worst places in America to be. And it's basically all black. And I was going through and they don't have grocery stores in Sandtown Mm -hmm. because they just get robbed and everything like that. But they have fast food and they have little marts that sell just, you know, junk food and and Doritos and and Mountain Dew and stuff like that. People are not getting adequate nutrition in these types of places. Mm -hmm. Tons of black people are not getting nutrition. This is not because of racism. This is because of crime in those cities, making it so that there are no grocery stores in these places. Yes. So if, if black people are overweight in those types of places, it's because they're not getting the right nutrition because not of racism, but because yep. the, these places don't want to be there. There aren't no, any businesses in many of these locations. And this is why we, when we perpetuate the narrative of systemic racism or use it as an excuse uh, or as a blanket statement to say, well, obesity is because of racism, crime is because of racism, low-income schools are because of racism, we we further ourselves from solving the problem. If we really looked into this, crime and socioeconomic status 
are massive reasons as to why these problems are persisting. And this is not just a black person issue. Again, it's an American issue. The obesity rates are just about as high in the white community as they are in the Hispanic and the black community. And they are very, very high, particularly here in America. But if we look the, into it- We're the most it, obese country in the world. We are the most obese country in the world. And when we look into it, socioeconomic status has a lot more to do with that than your average white man capitalist is being racist to me, so I'm stressed out and I have to eat. And this is what they do. They push the narrative of racism and then you forget and ignore the actual causes of the problem and the problem never gets fixed. Never also, gets fixed. It, talking about Hispanic people, Mexican food isn't he isn't that healthy anyway. No, like not. tortillas and, <laughs> and chicken and cheese is like not very good mm -mm. for you. Like it will no. make you fat. You're right. You know? You're, yep. I'm just saying. <laughs> just a side just, note. Yeah, just a side note. It's not like, you know, just saying. Yeah, but it's just... It's frustrating because you can see how pervasive an issue obesity is. You can see the people dying of, uh, you know, arterial diseases and heart disease and diabetes. And instead of looking at the real root of the problem, instead of actually trying to address it, you make excuse after excuse after excuse to pursue some other avenue that isn't going to solve the problem at hand. It is not going to solve it. I was on a uh, OAN today doing a segment on this on this story in particular and I saw a video of Ami Horowitz going out and talking to people about obesity in the black community and all of these people looked at him and go and went well it's not their fault they simply don't know what foods are healthy and what foods are unhealthy because racism because and this is the bigotry of low expectations because I'm black I don't know what's healthy and what's unhealthy and I don't know what to eat and I don't know how to how to prevent myself from being obese. Is that your is that your excuse for this problem? I will say one other thing. In the 1970s and early 1980s, America was on track to be one of the healthiest countries in the world. OK, with some one of the lower obese populations in the world. We are a very healthy nation. Then a little guy uh, named Tony, Tony Fauci, became head of NIAH, National Institute of American Health. Mm. And since then. He has been in bed with big food and big pharma, and now America is fatter than ever. So you can you can look up more into that, but I'll, I'll, I'll say that much now. But the reason why Americans are, are obese farther than any other country is not mm -hmm. just because of, you know, people choosing to eat unhealthy foods. The mm -hmm. things that are in our foods in America versus other places around the world is worse. It is worse. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is you are eating food and consuming things that are bad for you all the time oh i thought you're <laughs> i always think you're gonna you you always sound like you're on the precipice of a greater rant <laughs> and the thing is you're not. uh yeah no it's absolutely true we just allow people to eat garbage in this country and we make it cheap uh so mm -hmm. of course people people of lower socioeconomic status although you can be healthy on low income uh are yeah you can have, eat good food on a, on a lower income it's yeah not like, like but the bad food is cheap and it's readily available. Right. And it's easy. Yep. And it's easy. And I talking about food is like one of those things that whenever you talk about it, like, like I would tell people here, I would say you need to eat organic food. It's like way better for you, mm -hmm. but it makes you sound like an elitist to, to say that. It does. But I feel like they've kind of molded the argument around that way to make it sound like that's why you, what you should sound like. But it's just better for you. You will be a healthier person when you eat food that is not with all these pesticides on them and is organic and meat that's free range, all these different things. Might cost a little bit more, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. This is why we live in the most obese society. Yep. We we love consumption and consumption of things that are not great for us. And mm -hmm. we should focus on health in America because it is a massive issue. <laughs> We're so obese in this country. and We did not used to be. And that's, again... Not just obese. I mean, look at all the... the inflammatory illnesses right. that people have that yep. they didn't have years ago. I mean, yep. all the kids with asthma, all the kids with autism, all these different things are like way more than ever before. Yep. There's so many wrong things with the, th the things that we eat. Truly. So many, what we do now, uh, and I have an interview with Dr. Uh, Marty McCary that you can watch. It's on uh, our PragerU YouTube channel. But what we do now is we are focusing on reactive medicine rather than proactive medicine. We wait for the issues to arise and then we go, here's a pharmaceutical for that. Here's a pharmaceutical for that. Here's a pharmaceutical for that. Also, you turn on your TV and the, the pharmaceutical companies are advertising to you <laughs> about your health options in your reactive state of now, 
I've done something in my lifestyle or, you know, our culture has permitted a lifestyle that has made me develop a chronic illness. Now, let me just react to that rather than being proactive about my health and, and trying not to develop a chronic illness. It'll, it's okay. I'll, the, the healthcare will take care of it. Pharmaceuticals will take care of it. Well, the only reason you have that chronic illness is because of racism. Yeah, exactly. So any chronic illness that I develop is racism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. No, the lung cancer from smoking cigarettes. Racism. Racism. Yep. The liver failure from drinking alcohol. Racism. racism. Mm -hmm. That acne that I had when I was a teenager, racism. Mm -hmm. All of it. Well, that one was actually racism. <laughs> you know, it's it's a great, you know, I can sleep well at night knowing that I can blame everything in my life on racism. You know, if I ever want to, you know, stop doing this whole, I can be successful on my own. I can work hard. Let's fight the narrative of victimhood. I can always go back to it. Right, you can. Helps me yeah. sleep better. I cannot, unfortunately. <laughs> you cannot. As the white guy. No. So I'm kind of stuck in this. We have to find your your marginalized group identity. Do you, are you, are you I in any of them? I am straight, I am white, and I am a male. Okay. And. Yikes. Ugh, um, things aren't looking too good for you, buddy. Is there one for extremely attractive people? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're going to. That's a marginalized move on. group. <laughs> I feel marginalized. <laughs> yeah, you feel marginalized by yeah, it. Yeah. How so? Can you give an example? Uh, you just wouldn't get it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't ask you to you, try walking a day in my shoes. You might understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if for a white man, you probably just float on air. I do. I do. <laughs> it's like godliness. Just walking yeah. People are like, Will, you're hungry. Here's food. Mm -hmm. You want money? Here's some mm -hmm. money. It's so nice. <laughs> Police officers are like, hey, buddy, exactly. just go on about your day. Uh -huh. Yep. You want to go 50 over? Yeah, yeah, as you're in Kenosha with your mm -hmm. AR-15. Exactly, brother. L exactly, brother. Now, okay, let's get into another story here. Another person who I am proud of, besides Kyle Rittenhouse, is Ines Cantor of, of the NBA. He's come out, and we've been following him for a while now because he has set his sights on China and exposing them for what they're doing, uh, not only their concentration camps with the Uyghurs and the genocide that they're committing right now, but their slave labor, particularly in relation to Nike and their shoes. He tweeted out uh, the other day, money over morals for the king. Sad and disgusting how these athletes pretend they care about social justice. They really do shut up and dribble, a quote from Laura Ingram, when Big Boss says so. And by Big Boss, he means China. Did you educate yourself about the slave labor that made your shoes or is that not part of your research? That's baller. No pun literally intended. <laughs> That's literally baller. He's literally no pun baller. Intended. He's literally, a, he's a baller in every single way, shape or form that you can be. He's a smart guy. He's which a very is really smart cool. guy. It's, it's, it's nice to see people who are in that field actually standing up for what they believe in because it's very rare. So it I'm is. very proud of him. Yeah. Seriously. And, and he hasn't stopped. He and has not stopped. And he doesn't give, you know, one thing to school. He doesn't like care at all about, you know, about being a, a, supporter of the conservative movement or something like that, even though we're coming and, you know, defending him, what he's doing, he sure. doesn't care about like conservatives or anything like that. He actually really like genuinely cares about the people in these countries. You know, that's why he's doing it. It's like totally selfless. The things that he's talking about and saying it's not for him. It is for these people, which you can really tell with everything he says, you can tell that he's like a legit genuine dude, which yes. w when LeBron says something, you're like, this guy is full of garbage from top to bottom. You know, but Inez saying these things is like, you can tell he's so genuine and real about it. Yeah. And that's where we stand on. It. It's like, I don't care where, what your political affiliation is. I care that you value truth. I care that you fight for, for people who are actually experiencing real tangible oppression. And that's what he's doing. That's what Inez Cantor is doing. And he's not afraid to call out the people within his own line of work, his own colleagues who are doing this. He called out LeBron James in, in this post because LeBron James, as we all know, loves to talk about oppression. He has had so much to say about Kyle Rittenhouse. He had so much to say about the police officer who ended up shooting Micaiah Bryan after she tried to kill another woman right in front of him. He had so much to say then. He has a, a, an abundance of tweets about the black struggle in America, yet says nothing about the slave labor that created the shoes on his feet and the funding that Nike gets and that the NBA gets from China. Nothing to say about it. He's going to be crying today after that Rittenhouse case or just had a bunch of warheads. Right. He'll be like, oh, no, just sorry. I had, had a couple lemon heads yeah, beforehand. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. You just caught me at a bad time. Exactly. <laughs> what a loser. LeBron James is an absolute loser. Gosh. He's someone. LeBron James is 
supposed to be like this next generation's Michael Jordan, essentially, mm -hmm. right? It was like Michael Jordan, then Kobe, and then LeBron James. He is supposed to be like the number one quintessential role model for young boys. Gen genuinely. That's what like the biggest basketball, like the biggest basketball player in the world. Yep. That's like what they've been for years and years since Michael Jordan up to, you know, Kobe. And he has totally abandoned all of that. Yes. It's so horrible. You have, you could do so much good. You could do so much better for people and telling them to follow their dreams. And, and instead of telling black kids that everything's racist, you could go and tell black kids and say, you can be whatever you want. Look at me. I did this. Like you can, you can be amazing and, and, and cool and, and do something so great with your life. But yep. it, he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. That is that is the tragedy of it. Because it's not just that he's rich and, and has his shoes from China and doesn't care about that. Thing. It's like for America, the things that he could do on a scale of young men in this country, young men who need a direction and a role model in their lives, especially in the black community, which struggles from fatherlessness. Mm -hmm. And you could have LeBron James be like a father to these kids. And he's not. He chooses his own vanity and social justice messaging ahead of being a role model for these young kids. That yeah. sucks. That's sad. You know, it's the same way I feel about, you know, the same way you feel about LeBron, the same way I feel about Colin Kaepernick. It's these men who have brilliant. But Colin Kaepernick wasn't a good football player. No, but either way, either way, you still, you still managed to get a massive contract, become greatly successful in the field that you were pursuing. And instead of using that to say, I'm an example of what you can be and what you can do if you simply pursue your dreams. You choose to go, no, it doesn't matter how hard you pursue your dreams. And even in the NFL, I'm a slave. Look at how they poke and prod. Look at how they physically tested me for a job that that requires that I be physically able to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's slavery. That's enslavement. That's what these men do. And you got to think, it's just like, how much money are you getting for doing this? Because I, I'm just so hard pressed to believe that they actually truly believe what they're saying. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think don't Colin know. Kaepernick has gotten to a point where, yeah, I think he does. I don't know about LeBron James, though. I don't know about any of them at this point. It's really hard. It's hard to tell. Yeah, I don't know how you could look at the life that you've led and the actual facts of the matter. It's either A, you are lying and doing whatever it is to just perpetuate a narrative and make headlines, or B, you are putting out a narrative out there knowing that you are uninformed and you are, you are not doing the work to be informed enough to say something. And either way, it's bad. Kobe never would have did done any of this. Kobe, Kobe Kobe's the greatest. Would have never. Kobe is the greatest. It's just never would have done this. It's tragic. But again, Inez Cantor's doing something great. He's yes. going. He's going after not just the giant, but the biggest giant, and that is China. And mm -hmm. what happens to him China. after this? Who knows? Because I'm sure there's a massive target on his back. There's millions of people who are following him, following what he has to say, and he's not saying what. Uh, the well, elites want him to playing, say it all. Trying to stop playing Boston Celtics games in their country. Right. So. Because they don't want to see the truth. Mm -hmm. They don't want their people to see the truth. Yeah. So it's going to happen. But Ines Cantor is wearing it on his shoes. <laughs> He's wearing it on his shoes. He's created custom shoes that I'll show you before we move on to the next story uh, that show that, uh, hey, still researching and getting educated. And he puts morals over money, principles over money. I am informed and educated on the situation. What a so guy. So killer, man. That's awesome. Cool guy. Really, really is awesome. Now, let's get into something else that we talk about quite often on this show, and that is critical race theory. Everybody and their mother's talking about critical race theory. All the news outlets are talking about it. The leftist ones are denying it. The right ones are fighting it uh, and talking about the different schools where it's happening. We have an article here out of uh, uh, NBC News of a woman talking about how schools face parents who want to ban critical race theory and they don't get how teaching works this is just a a gaslighting article for the most part by a woman by the name of christina wyman author of the forthcoming novel jawbreaker in this article she details jawbreaker jawbreaker is the name of her of her uh, upcoming book so we have a lot to look forward to in that respect. She says that that parents showing up to school board meetings and fighting back against critical race theory, saying that it is not the school's right uh, to determine what uh, morals and principles their kids learn. It's not their school's right to teach kids that white ones are oppressors and white and black ones are oppressed. She said it's sort of like entering a surgical unit, unit thinking you can interfere with an operation simply because you're, the patient is your child. 
It's the stupidest <laughs> analogy I've ever heard in my life. It's so bad. Your your child is getting an operation for something that is incredibly specific. Yep. And you are paying the doctor to do it. And if they do it badly, you can sue them for right. malpractice. Right. You can't go and sue a teacher for indoctrinating your kid. Yes. It's also objective. Like a surgery is objective. And a problem has been identified. The surgeon is going in to fix this problem and is an expert in surgery. These teachers are not experts in critical race theory. They're not experts in teaching your morals and your principles to your children. They are not experts by any means. That Right now, a lot of these teachers, and shout out to the good teachers out there who are not doing this and who are fighting this and who are going to their school boards and fighting this indoctrination, but there are teachers who are not doing that. And they are teaching your children children a that their skin color dictates where they stand in life and how much privilege they have b that they should be confused about their gender and that boys can be girls and girls can be boys and three this crazy just asinine sex education for young kids who sh have no no means to be looking at this sort of information it's like saying you go to a restaurant with your kids and you order a meal with your kids and you order the kids meal and then they get the kid's meal wrong. You do have a right to say the mm -hmm. meal was wrong. There's my analogy. Yeah. And it works much better. Well, this is what this is what Christina has to say to that. Teaching too is a science. Unless they're licensed and certified, parents aren't qualified to make decisions about curricula. Sorry, where's your <sighs> degree? Before you teach any kid, you need to have a degree. Right, right stupid idiots yeah the 22 year old blue-haired leftist is teaching your five-year-olds english and basic arithmetic is going to come to you and go excuse me my two-year teaching degree certifies me as a teacher therefore you have nothing to say about the curricula that i teach your five-year-old and Most. i am teaching your five-year-old that he is actually a she and that his white skin is oppressing me she wants to talk about oppression and then is using the elitist mindset of the only way that you can be uh, someone with any sort of culpability to talk about something is that if you have uh, a degree in something, right? Which is nonsense. It's which nonsense. Is nonsense. Of course, it's nonsense. You can do tons of research on your own and figure things out and become an expert in something without it. It's it's just nonsense. It's an elitist mentality. She is part of the elite with the things that she is talking about within her own article, talking about oppression. Yep. You are the oppressor. And you know what? Uh, you're not going to get away with it. You are not going to get away with it. And we, we recently had an event where Christopher Rufo, who is our go-to expert on critical race theory, he's the one who blew the lid off a lot of what was happening in, underneath uh, the veil of social justice, not only in our schools, but our corporations, our government agencies, CRT, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. They're being taught everywhere. It is not just schools. But what he says is what we've been able to do on not just the political right, but with classic liberals and just general people who are unaffiliated, who value logic and reason, who are, who are not okay with critical race theory. What we've done is we've said, no, you're not going to run away from this term. You're not going to run away from CRT. You're not changing the name. You are we're not moving the ball across the court. We we've got it and we are going to call you out on it. And you are accountable to us because right now what the school boards think and what the corporations think and what our government agencies think is we're not accountable to you. Why do I care what you have to say? My check still comes from the government every month and you're not giving me any money. You don't contribute anything. And, and we have no accountability to you. We have no reason to have our curriculum match your values. And we can indoctrinate your kids as long as we like because the government's gonna fund it and I don't have to worry about you. And sure, you can take your kids out of school, but we still got the, the thousands of other kids that you've left behind. No, it's not happening anymore. And parents are fighting back. And, and, and when these schools don't comply, the students are being taken out. The students are being taken out. This is not going to persist at the rate that is happening right now. We saw this in Virginia too, with Winsome Sears and Glenn Youngkin winning their races because they took a hard stance on getting CRT out of our schools. Wish Glenn Youngkin would take a harder stance on other things. <laughs> I know he's, you weren't happy really with his mandate. Yeah. Yes. Glenn Youngkin, vax mandate, whatever. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you just wanted to make that little Get your kids out of schools. Side note. All right. That's what I'm going to say. Get your kids out of these schools. Homeschool your kids. Or fix the Send schools. them to a charter school. Is The schools are done. Just take your kids oh out of school. Oh my gosh. 
Will takes a hard stance on schools being done and abolishing them. I, I, I say you fight them and you fix them. Uh, I would love to see a resurgence of great educators uh, not stepping down, but staying in these schools and fighting it. We have a lot of educators who are leaving simply because they can't take it anymore. And I understand that. I get it. It's a hard fight to have to f- go through every single day, but do it, fight it, be there, be that person that the kids can go to when they are hearing this lunacy in their other classrooms and they can go to you and say, Hey, you know, Miss Witherstein just told me that I can be a girl tomorrow and that I can go get hormone blockers from my my PCP. Like Right, you should take them out of school immediately. <laughs> if that's what okay. Miss Witherstein believes, you don't want that person even if they you don't want them teaching your kid. Not all parents have the capability of doing that. So, parents who don't have the capability of doing that, that's why we need to fix America it. to make sure that we can have the capabilities of doing that. Well, that's a long-term battle, Will. Right. But would you rather have your kid get indoctrinated and turned into something For the gross? time being, a lot of kids have to be in the public school system. So your primary goal, your priority goal is to fight the indoctrination in your school system. Your long-term goal might be to alter and reform No, your primary goal system. is to educate your children. Yes, of course. Of so if course. they're not getting educated, then you can't... Well, people don't you know. have the means to just simply pull their kids out of school, William. I'm not saying everyone <laughs> has the means in a perfect world, but I am saying what you should do if you can. And you if should you try, can. And you should try in every way to make it so that you can. But most people can't. Not that most people. That is the fact it's of definitely the matter. Not most people, because if it was most people, then homeschool rates wouldn't be rising exponentially. They are rising. They can happen. They are rising exponentially, but not to say that most American parents can take their kids out of school. That's not the case. Most American parents cannot simply go having to generate income and go to work to provide for those children. So they can't just pull out of school and say, okay, well, buddy, Miss Witherstein said some nasty things about gender. Let me just pull you out of school. I think that's not the capability. It wouldn't have been the capability for my mother, not that she would have done that, but it would not have been her capability at all to do that with me. And I think that's the state of most American families. So the priority should be fighting this where it's happening. And that is going to your school board. That is fighting with the administration at your school. That is going and saying, no, I want to see exactly what you're teaching my child. You don't get to be confidential about that. I want to see the curriculum. I want to see your lesson plan. I want to see what you're doing on a day-to-day basis and checking in with your children. The average American family is spending less than an hour with their kids having meaningful, substantive conversation per day with their children. What's going to happen? Your children is susceptible. Your children are susceptible to propaganda. You send them to school for eight hours a day. Who knows if they're getting indoctrinated? Maybe they have good teachers. Maybe they don't. You come home, you plop them in front of the TV. They get more indoctrination from Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, all of them spouting the same BS. And then your kid goes to sleep and he wakes up the next day and does it all over again. It's tragic. Right. It's a tragic state of affairs. I will die on this hill. (laughs) I know you you will die on this hill. You'll die on the opposite hill. I will die on the opposite hill um, until the the uh, the environment is capable of being conducive for actual substantive reform and not abolition reform. Teach their own. (laughs) Get your kids out of schools. Don't send them to university. To each their own. Here's another example, but this one's not in the States here. Another school that is turning the tides towards leftism and wokeism. This is a British school. British school cancels Winston Churchill, replaces house name with 24 year old soccer player instead. (laughs) The names of Winston Churchill, the British prime minister who guided Britain through World War II and Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling have been axed at a school house names at one British school in an attempt to promote diversity. According to the Belfast Telegraph, Holy Trinity Church of England Primary School in Richmond has renamed houses honoring British wartime leader and Harry Potter author because they want to promote diversity on their campus. Don't send your kids to that school. (laughs) You're listening, all you Brits out there. Don't send your kids to that school. Church in England (laughs) in Luxborough. Don't you dare send your kids to that school. That made me cough. So instead of having these, Excuse you know, me. great historical, fi- I'm not saying JK Rowling is a great historical figure. I'm talking specifically about Taylor Winston White. Churchill. 
she's pretty great she's pretty great i'm gonna say specifically winston churchill instead of doing that they're putting a 24 year old soccer player from manchester united that's what's gonna take his place what what player uh rashford okay right now do you are you familiar with with uh, with manchester united players enough i know soccer okay okay he knows soccer football (laughs) football football actually uh anyways yeah so instead of having this guy (laughs) who took britain and led them through world war ii we got a 24 year old soccer player instead Mm -hmm. very cool no i mean super great listen british people love love soccer so it makes sense why they do this (laughs) but yeah i don't know how much i have to say it's just stupidity it is stupidity and i i Again, these are small stories and people go, well, who cares? Whatever. It's one school. It's one thing. It happens all over the place. It happens all over the place. And every day, a new story. Yes. Every day, another new little story. Which is why you should be watching our show every day at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern or listening to it on Google Play, Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Boom. That was a solid plug uh, because we talk about this stuff every day. So these little micro stories point to a macro problem. And that macro problem is that now we don't care about history. We don't care about specifically white males in history. And why not just erase? them and put up a 24 year old soccer player instead because that's what kids have to strive for why strive for immense excellence education knowing the history of not only your country but other countries and and the wars that we've we fought through uh together and against each other why teach them that why does it matter instead let's just teach them wokeism and give them soccer players and and pop stars to look up to and girls on tiktok so where now what is it it's a, it's a vast percentage of young people strive to be youtubers and 99%. social media influencers they it was 99 percent. yeah they would the rather park. be social media influencers and shake their butts on tiktok than do anything substantive mm-hmm. yes makes sense makes sense that's where we're headed guys this is uh this is going to be the the new world that we're in because the world order is just girls shaking their butt on TikTok <laughs> yeah. and men becoming Uber drivers. That's literally, and all of our jobs taken over by robots. Right. That is the future that they want. And you're going to love it. Ladies you're going to love it. And you're not you going to complain. It. Yeah. You're just going to smile. Well, you can go to the metaverse. So you can have all your fun there. Yes. So when we're all living in ready player one, where our society outside of our virtual universe is destroyed and in shambles and people are killing each other and doing drugs and homeless, we can always go to the metaverse. Mm hmm. I can always hang out with Zuckerberg and his monster friends. Right. Uh-huh. I can hang out with robot Zuckerberg. He's already robot Zuckerberg. Yeah. I, I've always wanted to double know what robot like Zuckerberg. to be a T-Rex. Yeah. He can, uh, while Zuck, Mark Zuckerberg whispers sweet baby rays in your ear in the metaverse. That is not what I want <laughs> at all. Please. <laughs> Putting on some sweet baby rays, smoking meats. <laughs> love that video i forgot about that video i love that video but yeah so that's what you have to look forward to ladies and gentlemen good luck good luck we'll be here too i guess Mm -hmm. maybe who knows who knows when they'll come for us they came for your tiktok today they did come for my tiktok today because they defended kyle rittenhouse so who knows when they will when they will actually come for us and just completely erase us off the internet in the giant plague of just censoring all conservatives and all free thinkers it's amazing drums drums in the deep (laughs) they are coming oh there's the quotes there's the quotes but guys uh we we had a lot of stories today we went over kyle rittenhouse we went over inez Cantor and his fight with china and nike and lebron james and the nba at large we went over crt being taught in our schools and teachers somehow still finding a way to defend it and saying that parents have no rights to talk about what their kids are being taught and we talked about winston churchill being taken out of a uk school uh as and being replaced by a soccer player all just amazing interesting stories that point out the state of our world today but it is fun friday and for those of you, uh, we have a lot of viewership today. For those of you who are new to the show and have not watched Will and Amala, every Friday we do Fun Friday. Who hasn't watched Will and Amala <laughs> live? Hasn't? Unbelievable. Where, if to, you, think, yeah. to think you know a guy. To think you know somebody. To think you know your people. Kick 
Kick rocks. kick rocks, Liz. You're telling all our new yeah. viewers. No, just rocks. kidding. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. I was telling no. Amla to kick rocks. No, it is fantastic that you guys are all here. Uh, hopefully, you guys are still here on Monday. We do this show every single day at two thirty Pacific, every single weekday at two thirty Pacific, five thirty Eastern, to talk to you guys about what's happening on a day to day basis from our perspective. Give you our hot takes. Will and I argue a lot. Taylor jumps in to mediate it. Uh, it's always a fun time. So mm-hmm. don't was, miss it. I was just letting the anarchy happen today. Yeah. yeah. Taylor just let it Taylor's happen. Taylor's not feeling too great today. Yeah, it's, if yeah, it's, Taylor's it's Taylor's tired. Mm-hmm. It's still a great day though. It's still it's a great day. It's International Men's Day. And it how, is. How about celebrating Ines Cantor and uh, Kyle Rittenhouse on International Men's Day? Yes. It is the Hold greatest justice in the world to have Kyle Rittenhouse get acquitted on International Men's Day. And to see all the women cry about it mm. is even better. It is. Happy International Men's Day. What a taboo thing to say as a woman mm-hmm. these days. Oh, the who's your, who's the your favorite field. man, Amala? <sighs> oh, I don't know who my favorite man is. I have to really think about this. Who is, do you guys have a favorite man that comes to mind immediately? Um, All, other than my grandfather. My grandfather is my favorite man on the entire planet. But outside of my grandfather, as like a celebrity or something, I don't know. I would probably say Laurel Hubbard is probably my favorite man. <laughs> <laughs> oh guys Elliot Page, yeah. sure. Elliot Elliot Page. Page. such an inspiration yeah, guys seriously. put your favorite man down below in the comments the health secretary of the administration That's oh my, my goodness <laughs> I'm, these I are all my favorite men 45% of people say that it's their first time watching on YouTube well yeah thank oh, cool. you guys for watching yeah, for you. the first time and hopefully you're back next week when we run the show back again with new stories mm-hmm. got some first timers here we got some first timers we'll yeah. We'll go easy on this you. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> this is pod racing. My favorite man is my grandpa. That's my Oh, we both man. said my grandpa. You said that too? Yeah. My grandpa's my, my grandpa's favorite. your favorite too? Well, not not my not your grandpa, but my grandma. Oh, okay. Your grandpa. <laughs> grandpa. My grandpa is my favorite. Yeah. He's he's my he's my role model and, and best guy in my life. So. What about you, Taylor? T Dog? Hot Scott, for sure. <laughs> oh, Hot Scott. For all um, you new viewers, you haven't had the wonders of seeing Hot Scott, our producer. Uh, yeah. One of these days you will. Yeah, the second hottest guy in the office. <laughs> okay, first, but yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would say my dad, probably. Amazing. Nice. You you also had a different one, though, Keanu Reeves. I did. I said, you know, if I was going to pick a celebrity, it'd probably be Keanu Reeves. I hear nothing but good things about Keanu Reeves on a day-to-day basis. I've never heard a heard drop of bad publicity about Keanu Reeves. I've heard some weird things. Well, I don't stand for that, and I don't agree. Well, you're saying. <laughs> because I haven't heard it, so it mustn't be true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would say my favorite man right now, Bobby Kennedy. That's who Oh, I'm. he's great. He's great. He's a cool guy. Yeah, that's my favorite right he's now. He's powerful. Uh, okay, guys, for our fun Friday, we're going to do a couple of barstools, barstool sports brackets. You have to turn this towards me more. I'm going to turn this towards you. We have a little uh, a bracket we've got set up here. The first bracket is best gas station snack bracket. Yeah. We are going to determine the best gas station snack and uh, not sponsored, by the way. We are not sponsored by any of these brands, any of these snacks. <laughs> But we will let you know what the best one is. Well, you're telling me I'm not sponsored by Take Five <laughs> or M and M's or Chex Mix. They don't like conservative, right wing extremists. You know, you never know. You never know at these places. Let's get into the first one: uh, Slurpees slash Ices versus Snyder's Honey Mustard Pretzels. I like the Buffalo okay, Snyder's first of all, Pretzels, gross. but those ones definitely, are definitely definitely Slurpees. No, if I can choose buffalo pretzels, I'll choose those. Okay, well, we're not picking. It's not buffalo. That is it's t- honey mustard. All right, Taylor, type. I guess I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to be the the swing vote here. I'm gonna say uh, the Slurpees. Okay, Slurpees. You boom, 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 boom. Okay, next bracket: fountain soda or Gatorade? Gatorade, for sure. It's not even close. Gatorade. Done. Right. Okay, so we got Gatorade and Ices in the first one. Okay, Peanut M and M's, Arizona Arnold Palmer's. Arnold Palmer. No way. Peanut M and M's. All day. Straight up. Why are you guys so bad at this? Straight up Peanut M and M's. You understand that you're giving. <laughs> you're supposed to give the right answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving all right answers. All right, I never fine. give bad answers. Next one: Roller Dogs and Taquitos or Chex Mix. I would never eat a gas station hot dog. Holy cow! When I was when I was like 14. I was at, I was, I had to do, uh, like for your driving permit, I was doing like all the classes and stuff and there was nowhere for me to eat outside during the lunch. And I had like, I only had like $5. So I would go outside and I'd go to Seven Eleven, and I would get the taquitos and I would eat taquitos every day for lunch from Seven Eleven. 
and uh Oh, that's gross, Will. No, they were great. At the I'm time. judging you. I had you. one. I, I'll be honest, okay? No, don't, Ugh, no judge I'm but like, I had ooh, one, I just got chills. I had one like three or four months ago, and I thought I was going to die. They're I mean, really yeah. Good. It's not food. It's literally it's not food. It's not food. It's dog food. Which I is, wouldn't even give it to my dog. Ugh, we're going Chex Mix on that one. No, that's unacceptable. <laughs> uh, Taylor tiebreaker. On the... Taquitos or Chex Mix? The roller taquitos at the gas station. Yeah, I must those, specify. I, I had one of those things like a, like a year ago. That's un um, unacceptable. I was playing volleyball, I needed like something in my right. stomach, and I was like, oh, this is like hot food, and jail. I, I felt super sick after. So Chex go. mix. Chex mix. Okay. Fine. Next one: trail mix versus take five. Trail Ooh. mix. Trail I don't mix. I know what a take five is. It's like a peanut chocolate type of. I don't like bar. That. Uh, yeah, definitely trail mix. Sunflower seeds versus energy drinks. Sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds, seeds yeah, baby. Easy. Raised in the, the south. I love the dill pickle ones. You can't be a Florida girl without sunflower seeds. I think I think it's oranges that <laughs> Florida girls have. Well, yeah, I did actually. It's boiled peanuts. So where the real thing. Yeah. Oh, boiled, boiled peanuts. Boiled peanuts. Boiled. That's how you have to say it. Boiled. Boiled. It's boiled. <laughs> it's called boiled. 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 Yeah, that's how you say it. But boiled yeah, no. Pain. Boiled peanuts, oranges, sunflower seeds are like quintessential to growing up in Florida as a young kid, especially in rural Florida where I was from. So yeah. sunflower seeds all the way. Okay. Colorado is like granola bars. Granola bars. Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, you're all granola people uh -huh. over there. Exactly. Over there in so, wherever you're from. Yeah, weed brownies Aurora. and granola bars. <laughs> oh, my Mine gosh. really takes me back to my childhood. <clears throat> yeah. The old edibles really takes me yeah, back to five years old. Yeah, exactly. I remember those days. <laughs> You just take them and watch that so Raven and mm -hmm. really you feel like you're a psychic along mm -hmm. with her. I was actually. <laughs> right, next next one. one, pre made sandwiches versus combos. I've never had combos in my life because they look disgusting. I won't eat anything that's like flavored off of like a food like that. Yeah, both of them sound gross. I guess I'll I'm gonna pre have to go pre made sandwich, yeah. although I would never eat that either. Yeah, same. Okay. Fine. Beef jerky versus sour gummy worms. Beef jerky. <sighs> I'm beef a big jerky. sour candy fan. Okay, well, you guys we both went. said beef Sorry, jerky, Emma. so whatever. Whatever. Okay. Right. You need the protein. Next bracket. Okay. Slurpees versus Gatorade. Gatorade. Slurpees. Gatorade. Oh. Yes. It's hydration. Let's go. So lame. Okay. Peanut M&M's versus Chex Mix. Peanut M&M's. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Easy. Don't have to, don't even need a tiebreaker on that. Trail Mix versus Sunflower Seeds. Uh, Ooh. Sunflower Seeds. I think I'm going to go Sunflower Seeds too. It's just like they're unbeatable. They're mm -hmm. so good. Uh, and then pre-made sandwiches versus beef jerky. <laughs> That's beef a tough jerky. one. That's a real beef tough jerky. one, bro. That pre-made <laughs> tuna salad sandwich from 7-Eleven is really, you know, uh -huh. head to head with beef jerky. What is? <laughs> okay. Alberto. So uh, beef jerky, it is on that one. Okay. What do we have after this? Gatorade yeah. versus peanut M&Ms. Gatorade. Peanut M&Ms for sure. I'm going to. I could always drink a Gatorade. I can't always have peanut and M&M's. Gatorade. Yes. Terrible. Gatorade, Gatorade for the win. Gatorade. Sunflower seeds versus beef jerky. Beef jerky. Beef jerky. Beef jerky. Yes. Okay. Beef jerky versus Gatorade. Beef jerky versus Gatorade. Okay, so it's funny because beef jerky and Gatorade are basic, basically the only two things I ever get to eat from a guest. <laughs> okay. So which one is the ultimate winner? Um, I'm going to go beef jerky. Except no, I'm actually gonna go Gatorade because oh, Gatorade no. is like it's if, beef jerky. I'm I think Gatorade. I think if I went into a gas station right now, it'd be line for the Gatorade. Boom. Where are my Gatorade boys at? Woo 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 woo! Fill and also, up with that sugar. guys, I'll be having the protein. I literally that beef jerky at the gas station is has as much sugar in it as Gatorade. Probably. I'm from it's Florida. Not a smart shopper. It's like guess so what, bad guys? For you. Florida gave you guys Gatorade. Gave you guys your top best gas station snack bracket food. Because Drink. of what team at what, what university? UF Gators, baby. And I know that because my best friend would kill me if I didn't know that. She's a Gator. Uh, so yeah, UF Gators. And they brought you That's guys Gatorade. That's the only sports team Amala's ever been able to name. <laughs> ever in my life, actually. Just That's because cool. I grew up right next to it. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, next bracket is the worst red things. This one's a funny one. Again, you guys can get these at Barstool Sports. Uh, we're doing the brackets live for you. We're going to tell you what our worst red thing is. You can put down in the comments below. Do the bracket with us. Let us know what you think. Number one, first bracket, the devil or the Game of Thrones red wedding? I mean, yeah. you kind of got to choose the devil, huh? Yeah, I, but the red wedding was pretty bad. I'm choosing the red wedding. You're choosing the red wedding? Yeah. I had such a visceral reaction to the red wedding. Like the Game of Thrones yeah, red wedding tough. was the worst thing that 
ever had happened to me at the time. So I knew I was going to happen. So you're picking the devil just because? Yeah, it's a devil. So lame, guys. Okay. Watery pre squirt ketchup (laughs) (laughs) or Raggedy Andy. Obviously, the ketchup. ketchup This is my favorite. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So gross. Uh, Raggedy Andy. Ketchup. Yeah, I'm ket- I'm team ketchup. 100. percent It's it's so I gross. Hate Raggedy Andy. You hate Raggedy Andy? Why? It just looks so <clears throat> disgusting. Okay, fair enough. It looks enough. like a like a, a horrible. No kid should ever have to go through the torment of having a Raggedy Andy. I, think I don't it's even know what cute. that is. It's kind of cute. No, it's not cute. It's disgusting looking. Okay, whatever. Next bracket: carrot top or drunken wet Papa John. <laughs> Again, that's the best thing. <laughs> Yeah, I think drunken wet Papa John is my dream. Yeah, that's, that's my great. favorite red thing. Yeah, um, I'll say carrot top. Carrot is top. Worse. Carrot top's worse. Is worse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's super annoying. Okay, next one: the Soviet Union or Scott Farkas? I have no idea who Scott Farkas is. You don't is. know Scott Farkas? No. What is that from? It's from a uh, Christmas Story. He's the mm-hmm. kid who's oh. like, oh, <laughs> makes him lick the pole, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then he like yeah fights them. Oh well, he's pretty butt. horrible, but kids. Soviet Union is worse. Yeah. I mean, lick a pole, lick a pole, million, bullied right. Randy a little bit, dead. killed a hundred million people. Right, leave me starving I mean, and yeah. dead in a ditch. It's tough. Think. It's definitely tough. It's yeah. tough. All right, I'll say Soviet Union. Soviet <laughs> Union. Next one: rashes or Supreme parody shirts. Uh, okay, so as somebody who used to work before working at PragerU, I worked in allergy, asthma, and immun- immunology. Saw a lot of rashes in my day. Treated a lot of them in my day. Rashes are definitely worse than knockoff Supreme shirts. Yeah, I hate those shirts, but a rash would be way worse. Depends on the rash. <laughs> some of them are pretty good. Yeah, I've had some pretty good rash. <laughs> no, I, I would, yeah, I'd probably say this. All right. Supreme shirts. Okay, next one. Xbox 360, 360 Red Ring of Death or Cold Source. Um, you're not old enough to know what that Red <clears throat> Ring of Death even is. Yeah, exactly. Does it mean your Xbox is dying or something? <laughs> yes, but it was like a thing. Yeah. Do you remember Will? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I had an Xbox and a, and a 360. Did you ever get the Red Ring of Death? I totally no, I didn't. Did. I never got I it. I found a guy on Craigslist who like did figured out this process. You like wrap your Xbox in a towel and it like melts some piece and it like magically fixes it or something. But then it broke again like a few months later. Oh, really? I'm going yeah, cold sores. <laughs> yeah, cold sores are the worst. I've never had one, but it, it sounds horrible. My fam I don't want to expose my whole family, but we like <laughs> habitually get them. Ugh. It's like it sucks. Sounds pretty bad. No. So yeah. cold source it is? Any physical ailment is like worse than... Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Here's an easy one. Kathy Griffin or Kmart? Kathy Griffin. Kathy immediately. Griffin. I Kathy love Griffin. Kmart. I miss Kmart. Is it still around? I, Kmart's great. No, I'm kind of maybe... I, I think I have a Kmart back in my town where I'm from, but it's super tiny. I was driving through somewhere when I was on my book tour and I saw a Kmart. I think it was in like near Memphis. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, this is why... People don't live in Memphis. Those blue right. light specials, let me tell you. <laughs> I love Kmart. Okay, next one. Acne or the kid in school with red stained lips? That was me as a kid. Yeah. I so would you just, don't you don't accept the hate. You would just do that all day I would long? Just lick my lips all day Why? long. Why? Me- well, because you start doing it. You accidentally do it and then your lips get dry. Uh-huh. Right? And then, and then so you then, keep doing it. And then you keep doing it because your lips are dry. And then you lick them so much that you just got these dry lips. Wow. Like this giant red ring. And my Bro. mom would have to like put Vaseline like all over yeah, my face. Yeah, you bags. gave yourself an eczema. And they, it would, they would like crack and bleed. Oh gosh. I looked horrible. Acne horrible. is totally worse. What was that TikTok no, joke the you said the other red day? lips Alma? are way worse. No, because you can create that. Acne, what? What did you say? What was the like be a man TikTok thing you said the other oh, day? Oh, it's like, uh, if you're, don't, don't use chapstick. Just let your lips crack and bleed. Be a man. Yeah, I never <laughs> use chapstick. I haven't used chapstick since, no, nah, like I, I don't use chapstick. <laughs> I, I'll get a chapstick and I lose it in five seconds. I can get like a 20 pack of chapstick and I will lose all of them like immediately. It's yeah, the worst. I, acne is totally worse. <clears throat> chapstick is a created problem. People, they continually use chapstick all the time. But if, I guarantee you, if you stopped using chapstick, you would never have to use it again. If you like just got over that hump. You got to th- stay hydrated. I don't use it and my lips are fine. They're very Well, soft. you're hydrated. <laughs> got to stay hydrated. So people can stay hydrated and then not use chapstick. Sure. Definitely. So I mean, not not everybody. Some people do just have dry lips. But anyways, we got a bracket. I pick acne. I think we can agree it's acne. I don't. I choose you. Taylor, what do you agree? Kid you in think? school. It's the kid in school that gets me. Like I, I don't know. What? I'd rather acne, have acne is so or, like, much be worse. By a gross looking kid. <laughs> it's not saying Will he's Will harassing you. It's just saying he exists. Which well, one is that worse? Is harassment. Hey, oh Taylor. my god. <laughs> Especially if he's a white male, his very existence is violent. Oh, okay, right. whatever. So we're going with the kid. Let's move on. Okay, <laughs> devil versus the watery ketchup. <laughs> That's tough. I'm picking watery ketchup. <laughs> I'm picking the devil. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, you got to pick the devil. I mean, the watery ketchup you... grosses me out more for some whatever reason. But... Are we going to get through this entire bracket just for you guys to pick the devil because he's red? I don't know. This is going to be unacceptable. He's like the worst. How if can you, you not pick the devil as the worst thing? I know because this is the trick, which is why the Game of Thrones Red Wedding is worse and you should have picked that at the start. Anyways, they pick the devil. He's the archetype of evil. Okay. The Soviet <laughs> Union versus Carrot Top. <laughs> Soviet How many Union. people has Carrot Soviet Top killed? Union. Okay. <laughs> millions. I'd l millions. <laughs> I'd have to figure this out. I go the Soviet Union. All right, Soviet Union. Okay, rashes versus cold sores. Cold sores. Rashes. Cold. I don't know. Neither one of these ever happens to me, so you guys decide. I don't cold know. Source. Neither of them cold ever happened source. to me. Okay, cold well, source. since Will is so passionate about it, we're going cold sores. Cold sores are the worst. Uh, okay, Kathy Griffin, kid in school with the red stained lips. Definitely Kathy, Kathy, Griffin. Kathy Griffin. Kid in school. Okay. All right, I'm gonna change the kids. <laughs> what? I want Kathy Griffin to win this entire bracket. She is the worst red thing. All right, All right fine. fine. <laughs> I like how convincing that was. Okay, the devil versus the Soviet Union. What's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference? Um, I'll say the Soviet Union. Okay. What are you saying, yeah, Taylor? I mean. I don't know. I feel this is like an ethical conflict. <laughs> Listen, you know the devil's the worst. We all know the devil's the worst. We devil all know the devil's the worst. Union, okay? It's the best answer. Okay, yeah. Soviet Union. Cold sores versus Kathy Griffin. Cold sores. Kathy Griffin. Cold sores. Kathy Griffin. Cold sores. Yeah, Gosh cold sores. darn it. Okay. I just like ignore Kathy Griffin. She doesn't bother me much that me bother me that much because I just don't care. Okay. okay. The Soviet Union versus cold sores. Cold sores. <laughs> cold sores are way worse than, than the, the Soviet, Soviet Union. Union. I am telling you. A quote from Will Witt. Put that on a t shirt. Cold sores are way worse than the Soviet Union. They are. You know how many people are affected? Every it's already way past the millions affected in Would the Would you Soviet rather Union. spend twenty years in the gulag or have a cold sore every week for 20 years. <laughs> Would you rather spend 20 years in the gulag Dude. or have one cold sore? <laughs> cold sores are not a joke, Jim. Millions of families suffer every year. <laughs> I, I hate cold sores. I genuinely hate them. And I'll get them at the worst times. It's horrible. I hate cold sores. Well, so much. we just use this for a soliloquy of uh, Will crying yeah, about how horrible cold sores vendetta, are. I, I know. This is sores. He, literally. He hates the cold sores more than he hates wokeism. I know. And probably all these people in the comments are going to be like, Will Will has herpes. It's not herpes. Okay? <laughs> I just get cold sores. It's him peas. Guys, <laughs> it's him we, peas. We finished our bracket. The worst red it's thing Wednesday. is apparently cold sores, which I can't attest to because I've never had one. But uh, the the best gas station snack is apparently Gatorades. Now we're going to end Friday, fun Friday, with fan mail Friday. Uh, I got some fan mail here. At least I think it is. Taylor handed it to me and said somebody sent this to me. So we're going to open this up. Will, you got some fan mail too. Do you want to share yes. that before I... I'll share it next week because I don't have the cards and stuff. And uh, I, left, I left some of the other stuff at the new office. Okay. I have no idea what this is. <gasps> oh my goodness. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> that is amazing. Aww. Is that an Amla doll? It even has my little braids in the front. Are you kidding wow. me? The detail. Okay, so That's let, very cool. let me read the DM. It's yes. from, um, it is from, Ooh. let me read it. Ty Taylor, my 14 year old daughter, is sending uh, something to you to give Amla on the show if you could. She spent over a month working on this for Amla while watching the show every day. She already has it in a gift bag. Um, oh. And you Katie, is, to Katie is her daughter's bag. name, and she's super inspired by you. You so. were supposed to put it in the gift bag, Taylor. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Jeez, Taylor. I didn't, I didn't want to like open it on her behalf. Anyways. Okay, I'm not going to read all of this because yeah, this don't. is personal, but Katie, thank you so much. This is the best fan mail I've ever received in my entire life. You are so sweet, and I love that you love the show. Hopefully, you're watching it right now. Put your name down in the comments if you are. Thank you. Will's holding the doll. <laughs> I like this doll better. Than, doll than the real Amala? It doesn't say much. <laughs> Should we abolish public schools? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, Will. See, that's why I like the dog. Oh my gosh. Katie, you're amazing. This is amazing. Katie, that was very sweet of you. Oh, this is awesome. Truly, really, really, really nice. Oh, it says crafted for you behind. I'm, this is fantastic. Anyways, this is a great way to end Fun Friday. Mm -hmm. Will, you want to you wanna count us off or do you want me to do the, the outro? How about the new Amala? 
guys, thank you so much for watching. We do the show every single day, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. You can listen to us on Google Play, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. If you would rather listen than watch, you want to do other things on your phone while you listen to us talk about our hot takes, give you our opinions, talk about the news, get you updated on what's going on in the world. Guys, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single day when we go live. And all of you watching today, it's been a big day. I hope to see you guys next week because we do this every single day weekday. Bye from me and mini me. Thank you guys for watching. Will Witt.